Hey, what's up? Welcome to another episode of the Brothers War Podcast. I'm Zach. And I'm Ryan Green. And we talk about all things magic, but mostly mostly Commander. Commander. All right. So this week, we are going to talk about how to upgrade a deck, right? You've got your sweet Commander deck that you've had for a while. And uh, it's time to, you know, take it back to the gym and get it uh, pumped up a little bit. So that's what we're going to be doing. Yep, maybe some new sets have come out. Maybe you've seen some, learned some new tricks. Yeah, maybe, maybe your deck is gathering dust in the corner, and you wanna you, know, you wanna bring it back out for a spin. Yep. You know, fond memories of a deck forgotten. So that's what we're gonna do this week. But before we do that, we want to say thank you to all of you out there listening and viewing. Um, it, it's so awesome that you let us do this week in and week out, and just thank you so much for listening, right? Because that's that's what really helps us. But you know, if you uh, if you want to do a little bit more. You could subscribe to our YouTube channel. Hopefully you're watching that. This yep. video is there. Um, you could follow us on Twitter. We'd love um, to talk to you. Yeah, absolutely. And if you're watching the video, I guess there's like some handles down there that, that show like how to do that. Yep. Right. Um, and, you know, always tell a friend, right? Like if you enjoy what we're doing, uh, share us with the people that you care about because that means a lot to us. Okay. Sure does. Uh, so, Zach, my man, what's been going on? Well, after we uh, did the episode last week on the cards that we should be playing with, I, I took my own advice and I went and I got a foil exquisite blood. Ooh. Uh, yeah, it was, it was pretty tight. Um, <clears throat> it wasn't much more than the regular one, so I was just like, let's go for it. Yeah, yeah, the old 3 $4 foil upgrade is, is pretty much worth it, especially a card that pricey. So For sure. And I had to go get a, a foil um, a sanguine bond, and that ended up being a lot cheaper than I thought it was. It was only like $0.99. Cents. Hey, that's not bad at yeah. all. I mean, you know, if you, if you're gonna bling it out, you know, and you're gonna and you're gonna drain out the table with a combo, <laughs> it's got a match. Yeah, you're doing style, right? But uh, yeah, that happened this week, and then uh, I also played a game called uh, Warhammer Underworlds with a friend of mine. I, I I used to play a game called Star Wars. Was was your friend Kate Beckinsale? It was. How'd you know? <laughs> it was the underworld. Yeah, <laughs> that got me there. <laughs> yeah, it was totally like vampires and stuff. Uh, no, it's like a. It's a game that's kind of like Imperial Assault, except the it's like a little bit smaller of a board, and it I don't know you move people around on hexagons, and it was a lot of fun. I, I really enjoyed it, but uh, it wasn't magic. Right? Yeah, and, and nothing is. Yeah, that's fair. Um, so what's been what's been going on with you, man? All right, so uh, today for your hashtag MTG Dad moment, uh, this first segment is going to go to my son Mal. Um, this morning, just this morning, when I got up, um, you know he's he's walking now and, and doing a lot better um, than he has been, but this morning, uh, we have like a little gate area so they can't get into the danger zone, right? Uh, yep. You're all familiar with the danger zone. And um, I mean, we may be coming to you live right now from the danger zone. Oh, trade secrets. Um, but so so I walked up to the gate and he just, he was out there in the middle of the room and he stood up where he was and he just kind of like waddled <laughs> over to me, you know, and, and he like, you know, got, I got to pick him up right there first thing in the morning. And uh, yeah, it was just, um, it was just beautiful that like, you know, he's got this this locomotion now, and, um, you know, he wants to, he uses it to come see me, you know, like, that's, like, the first thing that he thinks about when he sees me. So, that was great, um, and super cute. So, uh, okay, and then there's another one. Uh, this is a great story. This was a couple of days ago. Um, my daughter, like, I guess, you know, like, when you have kids, it's like, what do you want to be when you grow up? It's, right. it's kind of a thing, right? So, um my daughter, she told me unprompted. I didn't ask her what she wanted to be when she grew up. She just said, when I grow up, I want to be a superhero. And I thought that was super cute. Yeah. Uh, superhero, super cute. And, uh, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so, I mean, naturally, when you're a parent, you're like, okay, that's cool. Like, I, what superhero do you want to be when you grow up? And she said, Batman. And that, I mean, that's cool. <laughs> yeah. Because it's, like, achievable. Word. Right? Like, if she works hard enough and somehow, like, inherits a whole bunch of money or something and has gadgets and, a, you know, a, a, car. a Veronica car or yeah. a Veronica grappling hook or something. Like, it could totally happen. Yep. But I got to thinking, I was like, man, like, that that's not good for me and Kelly, right? right? Because in order for that to happen, she needs a tragic backstory. Right. Someone's got a propeller. <laughs> so, uh, but I don't know. Like, I thought she was going to say Spider-Man, right? I, did, I would have like, expected that too. Yeah. Or, like, Spider-Woman yeah. or, or Batgirl or whatever. But, no, it was Batman and... Um, I don't know. It was just super cute. Um, and also I just think it's cool that like, you know, what she wants to do when she grows up is help people. Yeah. Right. Like, sure. And, and she does that with all of her toys and stuff too. So super cute. Yep. Okay. So there's one other thing 
that's been going on in my life. This, <clears throat> this is not a hashtag MTG ad moment, but um, I got something in the mail. Hashtag mail. Ta-da! Uh, so this is this is from DJ at Jumbo Commander, and I'm opening it live on air. So I don't know what it is. I, I am a patron, so it's probably some sort of patron award. But yeah. uh, hey, I don't know. Let's see. Let's, let's see. What is it? It's always fun to like awkwardly open stuff <laughs> on video. <laughs> You should definitely open it in like a mouse or destroy it what kind of way. I don't I'm not sure there was an option other than that here. This is probably super awesome for the audio listeners. Yeah. <laughs> and, and I know Mike is loving this crinkle here. Yeah. But uh, all right, let's see. What do we got? Okay. So. Aha. All right. Jumbo holiday wishes. Very cool. I'll get that close to yeah, the Yeah, that's camera. pretty cool. That's awesome looking. Yeah. Oh, look, fibble tip down there. Okay. Yep. Ooh, and look at that. Greater Good, signed by DJ. That's awesome. That's a great card. Sweet. Ooh, and on, on the back, Wild Pear also signed. So, man, this is really cool. Yeah, that's um, awesome. These are both super playable cards. And I, I love having cards signed by people that, you know, I, I mean, artists, yes, awesome. But, like, I have some other cards that are signed by, you know, uh, other various members of the community. And Same. you do, too. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, man, check this out. So, um, cool to be a patron and uh, new toys. Yep. That's pretty sweet. So, it's not an episode of the Brothers War. If we're not thanking Mike Condon for uh, being there for us and, you know, someone we can talk to and bounce ideas off of and also does the sound editing, um, makes us sound awesome every week. So, you know, just want to give him a shout out and say thanks, Mike. We we definitely appreciate you. Thank you, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. So, uh, we're getting towards the main topic, but we're not quite there because we're going to do a segment here where we talk about games we played at our local game store, yep. i.e. the Mothership. Mothership. Shout out to Mothership. <clears throat> and this game, or these games, yeah. happened last night. Sure did. Right? Okay. So, Zach, um, why don't you take game one? All right. So, game one, I played my I Leave the Eternal Pilgrim deck. Hey, interesting. We might be talking about that yeah, a little right. bit later. Four shadowing. <laughs> Did it. Five shadowing. <laughs> Ryan uh played his Gaunti Lord of Luxury deck. And uh, uh we met up with a listener, Ben, who was playing Rona, Disciple of Gix. And then we played with Alden, someone that Ryan had played with before, uh playing Marin Claw of Neltoth. Clan of Neltoth, I believe. Yeah. Sure. I think. Yeah. But anyway, um, it was really cool because Ben like contacted us and, and yeah. drove from San Marcos to come meet us. So it's about yeah, an hour weird. drive. So yeah. uh, shout out to Ben. Thanks for for coming to, yeah, to play times. with us. And actually, the three games we played were great. Um, they were. You know, ben and uh, Alden were great. They were awesome to play with. And it was a really fun experience. So um, do you want to keep going? I'm sorry. I just totally like interrupted no. you there. No, it's fine. Um, so I, I feel like like Ryan won this game, but like. Really? I feel like I enabled him to win. So I'm pretty sure I won, I think. But um, <laughs> we, we got to tell the listeners at home the fun moment that happened. Yeah. So Ryan's, there's a bunch of creatures out and there's a bunch of crazy stuff going on. And Ryan plays uh, Revel and Riches. And I, I read this card and I'm like, okay, so if a creature dies, he gets a treasure token that can, you know, make a mana. And I was like, cool. And then there was some other stuff, and I was like, oh, that's flavor tags, whatever. <laughs> I was like, not important. So it comes to me, and Ryan, when he plays it strip, says, man, I feel like somebody wants to wrath the board. And I was like, I, I did say that, and it was like a clue, right? Right. <laughs> and then I, I, I took it as a clue to Zach, wrath the board, trying to get a bunch of mana. And I was like, okay. Like, there are a lot of creatures on the board, and I was like, this is starting to look kind of scary for me. So I just, I played it down. I was like, wrath. I was like, did it. <laughs> and then Ryan's getting his treasure token. He's, putting, he's like putting dice on it and all this. And it was like 22 creatures that died. So he got 22 uh, um, to treasure. I was like, yeah, it's fine. And honestly, if that's all the card did, that would be enough. It yeah. was great. It was super great. But th there's another line of text on that card. Yeah, that says if you, uh, I believe you have 10 or more. That's right. Um, you win the game. Yeah, during your upkeep, if you control 10 or more treasure tokens, you win the game. And honestly, I'd play the card without that text. Yeah. Um, actually, it might be, like, less scary without that text. Like yeah. Maybe people just let it stick around. But I think that was the line that you didn't Yeah, I didn't, I didn't read that. I thought that was, you know, um, I thought that was a uh, flavor text. Also, wasn't that card signed? 
Uh, yes, it was. So some of it was obfuscated. Oh, oh I see. Well, I think you like it was like some hidden information. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but yeah. So luckily enough, um, Alden, the the person to my right, was able to do a, a Viridian Shaman and yep. sacrifice it to kill the Revel and Riches before I won the game. So we got to do a normal game after that. But you know, when you get twenty two extra mana that you can kind of use at your leisure laying around, it was great. Um, yep. I played a lot of cards and I did a lot of things. Um. Actually, I think, I think it was like that next turn that I, I played like a Grey Merchant of Asphodel and I bounced it with Erratic Portal and I had Panharmonicon in play. Yeah. And I, I drained the table for 16 twice? Something like that. It was it was enough to kill me. So, yeah, that that's, yeah. that's a win. Yeah, that killed Ben and I. And then I was like, what was Alden at? Like, he was like an eight. eight? Yeah, yeah, that's what I was thinking too. And like, y'all went, y'all went at it for a little bit. Well, the problem was that he had a Phyrexian Plague Lord and a Zoni Thousand Eyes. And so every turn with uh, Marin's ability, um, he was bringing back a Zoni Thousand Eyes and making like eight tokens and then just being able to sacrifice them. And I could never, I could never attack. Um, but eventually I got down to Dalkin Orrery. Yeah. And uh, end of his turn, I did uh, Crux of Fate to wipe the board. And then I cast um, some creatures also at instant speed. And then I did Overwhelming Stampede and Eldrazi Monument that uh, I had taken from uh, Alden with Gaunti. So it was yeah. a pretty sweet game. That yeah, was pretty good. Why don't you uh, tell us about the second game, Ryan? All right. So this game, Zach was playing uh, Nivy, Nivy Perun there. Uh, I was playing my Mr. OPC Grenzo Havoc Razor deck. Uh, ben was playing Joda. Alden was playing Edgar Markov. And uh, this was a this was a fun game. It was kind of yeah. just like back and forth. There wasn't like a whole lot going on. Um, yeah. But um, basically what ended up happening is um, they left the red deck alone. And it like I played dogs. a bunch of different enchantments that let me like play extra cards and stolen strategy and outpost siege. And um, I was getting to play three or four cards a turn. And um, they, nobody ever killed my enchantments. Not well, once. Well, the one that like kept saying like people had to attack you. I really oh. thought that was going to be your downfall. Oh, yeah. So I was playing Trove of Temptation. <laughs> and uh, this is a four-mana enchantment that says, at the end of your turn, you get a treasure token. And then... Um, There'll be a picture right there. Oh, yeah, right there. Uh, and so, but, um, be you know, in order to, in exchange for that boon, um, everybody must attack you with at least one creature. <laughs> they attack you or a Planeswalker you control on their turn. Now, the reason I have that in the deck is because I want to, like, force people to get open so I can use Grenzo to get in there and goad things or cast cards from the top of their library. So it does function in my deck at the cost of, uh, you know, life. It'd be in a little bit of a, a punching bag, but that's okay. Um, and I, I don't know, like it stayed there the whole game. And there were definitely um, some deals made where I was like, he's like, hey, if I attack you with my zero two, will you not block it? And I was like, yeah, sure. Let's let's do that all the time. You know. So that, that was a really fun game. Uh, okay. So why don't you take game three? Uh, game three, I played Sahili. Uh, Ryan played uh, Alden's Edgar Margoff deck from the previous game. Uh, ben played Joda. And then Alden played Wakanda Forever, Lord Wind Grace. So with that game, um, I'm trying to think what happened. I got out to Thanks. like an early start um, with a bunch of vampires and Edgar Markov like yeah. tokening him up. And I was, I was kind of the, uh, you know, bashing everybody at the table, yeah. getting the life totals pretty low. Um, I had a um, door of destinies that got destroyed. So good, yeah. But well, yeah, by the time I had like three or four counters on it, so it was doing it was doing work. Um, and I at one point I used the swords of plowshares from. Um, did I use was that that game? I'm not, I'm not sure. I think that was a different game. Uh, but yeah. Oh no, it was it was um, Ben had a uh, Gerard Golgari Lich Lord, um. and he was like sacking big creatures that eventually took you out. Um, and it got Dude. down to me and Ben, and by that time, I was pretty much out of gas, and I didn't have a lot of card draw, and uh, Ben had his way with me by, like, ultimating a bunch of different Planeswalkers, uh, one of them being Ral Is It Viceroy, and, uh, you know, if you're gonna, if you're gonna go out, go out in style, this is a way to do that, um, the emblem says, whenever you cast an instant or sorcery, <laughs> um, deal four damage to any target and draw two cards. So good. that happened over and over again, and it was eventually my demise. But uh, it was a really sweet game, um, and we all had fun playing it. So yeah, for sure, um, it was a good time. Three really good games at our local game store. Yep. Um, what a Thursday night! How good! So yeah. good. All it's right. Great. So I guess that brings us to the the main topic. <clears throat> uh, we're going to be talking about updating decks, 
you know, how to do that when you need to, et cetera. This was a, uh, a topic that was inspired by Quincy Quayle, who is at Quayle Lancer on Twitter. Uh, yes, last night when we and, and we should point out that's like a quail with a lance, <clears throat> right. not not a quail answer, like not not a not a quail helping you out on a test or something. That's true. Yeah, <laughs> although I've had a quail help me out on a test. <laughs> what was it, Doug? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> do, 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 do. <laughs> all right. So, uh, yeah. All right. So continue. I'm sorry. So, um, yeah, we're gonna be talking about <clears throat> up here next, you know, because a lot of new players and and seasons players, I think too. Sometimes I have trouble knowing, uh, you know, how, how to make their decks better, what steps to go about. And we're going to we're gonna kind of like go over some some things that, you know, some steps that you can go through, questions you can ask yourself on, on how to do that. Yeah, basically just kind of a walkthrough on, on how to upgrade your deck and, yeah. and when you should. So, all right, our first thing here is how do you know when it's time to upgrade your deck? Yep. And uh, basically that's any time you want to. Um, yeah. But I, I think for myself, um, if I'm not playing a deck very often, that means it's not super fun to play. There's there's ways. Sometimes it's too powerful, but that, that's not really what we're talking about here. Sometimes it's just clunky or, yeah. or having bad draws or um, just isn't fun. And I, I think when I start feeling those things, that's when I know it's a sign to, yeah. to upgrade, right? It's time. Yep. Um, you know, in other ones, you know, when you're playing, it's just like, do you end up with a bunch of like, kind of like dead cards in your hand or cards that you wish were something else that just, I'm mean, not situationally speaking, but like, there's like, oh, there's something way better that this could be. There's a better version of this card, you know. Power creeps a thing, so you know, if if you haven't updated in a while, while you know, there there may be something that's just strictly better that you could you could have. Oh, I do like strictly better. <clears throat> yeah, I like it the best. Actually, we should do a shout out to Dev here, strictly better MTG on YouTube. I watch his videos a lot, and uh, maybe a little bit later we'll talk about how that could be a resource for you when you're upgrading your deck. Yep. So, uh, Dev, here's looking at you, man. Uh, okay, so the first thing that you want to do when you're going to upgrade a deck is decide what your goals are. And this is this is a good life lesson for, for life in general, not just upgrading your deck, but like yeah. figure out your target, figure out where you want to get to before you just sit down with a pile of cards, right? Um, so, you know, there's a lot of different ways to upgrade decks. Um, you know, you can overhaul a deck completely. You could try changing out the commanders. Mm -hmm. You could try like, you know, adding a color. Um, you could just try swapping out like five or six cards. So there's there's a there's a wide um, range of things that you can do to a deck. And if you know what you're aiming for, it's going to help you streamline the process and make some of your decisions a little bit easier. Um, yeah, and something else to consider is, you know, uh, updating your deck doesn't have to cost, you know, a lot of money. People are like, oh, well, you know, I've got to get like OG Dual Lands or like, you know, like just real expensive cards. <clears throat> you know, I mean, really what you can do is, you know, there's there's a lot of uh, a lot of commander cards that are, are not that expensive, but they're really good. Right. <clears throat> you know, you can look for deals and things. Um, you know, or if there's one really big upgrade card that you want, you know, maybe save up for a while, you know, don't don't buy other cards. You know, and I think that's something important to do is to think about to like really plan it what you want to get. So you don't end up buying cards that you're like, oh, you know, like I, I've done this. I've, I've bought a bunch of cards. I'm like, yeah, I'm putting this in this deck. And then I'm like, oh, uh, that's not as great as I thought it would be. Guilty. You know? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, for sure. I, mean, I just fill up my TCG player card. And I'm like, all these cards. Well, and the thing is, you're like, oh, it's 30 cents or it's, yeah. it's like a dollar twenty, And, you know, but you buy like 30 of those and it adds up. Yeah, for sure. Know? And then like that, those cards that you end up not using, like could have been that one right. good card that you really wanted to get, you know, that Gilded Drake or whatnot. So something you can do if you're like us and, you know, buy a bunch of these cards that you're like, oh, I don't need, I'm not going to use them, you know, thinking you can always uh, trade them into your, your local game store or trade them into um, Card Kingdom or, or wherever. Buy list them, yeah. Yep, because a lot of times when you get, um, or I'm sorry, when you trade in cards for store credit versus cash, you, you get a little bit of a bonus. Uh, you know, I think at one of the stores here, it's like, 10% more or something like that. So that's definitely something to, to think about, especially if you're trying to, you know, save up for those bigger cards and you've got a bunch of cards that are just sitting there that you're never going to use. Well, and a lot of times, like, if I'm if I'm drafting, like like mm -hmm. I like to do, um, that's a great place for those cards to go, right? Yeah, because for sure. Because if they're great in standard, but they're not, they're only so-so in commander, 
like that's the time to get rid of them. And yeah, then, like, for sure. Trade into some stuff that'll, you know, beef up your decks like we're talking about here. Get your upgrade on. Yeah, I was definitely happy trading that uh, the foil stomping grounds to that dark depths. Ooh, yeah, absolutely. Um, you know how much I wanted one of those for a while. So, <clears throat> um, another thing uh, to do is, is is you need to play the deck, right? Um, I would even say, you know, if it's one of these decks that's been kind of sitting in the corner for a while, definitely like give it play it a few times, right? Kind of see what what's working and what's not working. Yeah, get get a little refresher on on uh, kind of where the strengths and weaknesses are. I think. Yeah, for sure, and you know. Um, then try to decide what you think, you know, you maybe you want to take out. Um, there's a lot of ways that you can kind of figure that out, you know. You can ask your play group kind of, you know, for some advice um, and see, uh, you know, and you can also um, maybe start to ask your play group if you can, when you put new cards in, um, <clears throat> just if you can start with maybe one or two of them in your, in your opening hand just to make sure you get to play them. Because, you know, uh, if you're only upgrading like, you know, even like 10 cards maybe, you're not guaranteed to see those in a in a ninety nine card deck, right? So the other thing too is when you're when you're testing to also just keep playing it with the new cards too, <clears throat> and before you decide whether you want to keep them or not. Yeah, I mean, what I was gonna say is that like you know when you're when you're playing for like a tournament, right? You yeah. you actually like play test and you treat it seriously, right? Yeah. And you could do that here too, right? Like if you're like testing out a sideboard card in a matchup for modern, you know. Maybe with your play group, you would start with that card in your hand to see, like, what kind of effect yeah. it has on the game. And, and it's that same kind of idea here. And I think, you know, like, if, if you approached me and said, hey, you know, I'm trying out this new card in my deck, I'd be like, yeah, let's do it. I yeah, mean, for sure. Nothing's on the line here. Let's let's have fun. Let's make sure you're getting your deck where it needs to be, right? Because if your deck gets to the place where um, it's it's kind of firing on all cylinders and it's doing the thing it's supposed to do, then we're going to have more fun games. Yeah. And that's better for everybody all around. So. I don't really feel like you would get a lot of pushback, uh, audience, if you no. if you brought this up with your play group. But I could be wrong. Yeah, I mean, it depends on your play group. So um, something else um, is, the, and I do this for sure. Like, you know, if you build it, you you have some cards that like maybe you thought about putting in but couldn't find a place or just are kind of extra. You know, just keep them back to your deck box. You know, maybe you uh, slip one of those in. If it if you find something in your hand and you're like, man, I wish I had that card from the back. I mean, uh, from the back of your your uh, deck box. I mean, I know I I do it. There's there's always a bunch of cards in the back of my deck box because I'm like, oh, I'm gonna take this out or put this in and see and like. Well, and I mean, what it what it really comes down to is like those last like ten to fifteen twenty ish cuts from a deck. Like, yeah. oh, they hurt so much. You're like, no, I want to yeah. play with these. And if you keep them near your deck you're going to find opportunities to just slot them in uh, when you're playing and you'll feel less bad if you just keep them close to your deck. Right. You'll be like, I didn't really cut you completely. Um, it's your you're sideboard. St- you're, you're still here. You're still warm in the bench. Yeah. And, you know, there, you could, you know, there's a chance you could come up, you know, maybe one of the main deck cards gets injured and you're going to have to, you're going to see some playing time, right? Like that's the yeah. thing that could happen. Sure. And uh, I don't know. It makes me feel less bad about, about cutting cards. And also, it does like oh you know this card isn't as good as I thought it was let's yeah. let's get that vicious shadows in here you know bring bring that in like that's that's something I like to do so um I th- I think it's a good tip uh so you know we we want to you want to figure out you know how to how to make up upgrading your deck you know have the maximum effect efficiency right? is key absolutely um so there there are a few questions you know that you want to ask yourself to kind of narrow down where your where the weaknesses are in your deck that you need to to shore up you know yeah don't just like spend time like combing through all of your cards right Right. like think about and like target what you want to do first yep Uh, again it's it's about efficiency there you know saving the time you know it's time you could be playing or doing whatever else right i mean you know or 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 talking to your your the the cards that you've benched and be like it's okay i still love you (laughs) (laughs) true (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> um, so let's let's talk about some of the questions you can ask. Right? Yeah. Okay. So we'll like hit them up with that first one. So uh, you know what decks have been problematic for you, uh, and that you've been losing to. You know, H- how have those decks been winning? Right. Um, what is there something that I could put in my deck that would, you know, be an answer for that? You know, it's definitely going to be kind of meta specific. Oh, it's definitely going to be meta specific. But I mean, there's all kinds of questions, right? Like. Yeah. 
You know, are, are, are you getting comboed out? Maybe you need a little more counter magic. Yep. You know, there's, there's, we're going to go into some of those a little bit later. So I don't want to do it here. But um, yeah, you know, I mean, really like look at the decks you're playing against, right? It's not yeah. just about your deck. Right. It's about your meta and the decks in it. And if you're losing consistently to the same thing over and over again, Magic's a big game with a lot of cards. It is. And chances are there's something out there that you can use and, and probably even something that's not overly expensive that could just, you know, help you out against those trouble cases. So, yep. uh, you know, you really, like, in order to make that decision, though, you really do need to, like, boil it down to its essence. So, yeah. Something else to think about is, you know, what, what why has your deck been losing? You know, what are you having problems with, with mana? Are you not consistently hitting uh, your mana drops? Yeah, are you having color problems? Are, right. are, is the table out ramping you? Is it, like, turn five and you've got, like, four lands in play and everybody else has, like, seven? Yeah, that's definitely something that, that happens, you know. Um, are you are you running through your cards too much? I mean, out of your hand, are you running out and you know just getting? Um, I constantly have this trouble when I'm yeah. playing like like an aggressive deck or like a Boros type deck. I'm just like I only have two cards in yeah. hand. It happened when I played the Edgar Markov deck last it night. I was, I was like, oh, they, they killed all the creatures, and, and now I, now I'm, the chances of me rebuilding are just. No, it's not right. great because yeah. there, there wasn't a lot of card draw. So, I mean, you know, the deck can come out of the gate swinging, but, like, that's something that I would target for that deck. Yeah. I'd be like, what kinds of things can I put in here? You know, maybe a skull clamp and, and maybe a way to fetch it would yeah. have been, like, super good or something, you know? Um, and in that deck, you know, go to a Bandit Warlord, go fetch it. You don't have to have, like, a Stoneforge Mystic or or even, like, open the armory or something. There's, yeah. there's lots of cheap cards that can go... Get um, and I'm just making a ton of work for you when I just spout all those cards. Aren't That's I? fine. That's <laughs> fine. Okay. Uh, okay. So that was that one. Um, I like that you mentioned Boros. So I was definitely going to mention this happens with Boros, right? Like you just blow your water ball cards, and it's just like, well, I killed that one guy, but there's these other two people I got to deal with. Yeah, that's going to be troublesome. Right. I, I mean, I play a lot of mono red decks, and uh, I work in ways to draw cards. I, yeah. I work hard at it, too. Um, and luckily, there's been a lot of good options in, in like, the last couple of years. They've yeah. really printed a, a lot of good things, and they're fun, too. They're not just, like, boring card draw. They're like, what's it going to be off the top of my library, right? So I like stuff like that, and, uh, you know, they, they give your deck a little bit of late-game reach, and I like a deck with late-game reach, right? Like, I like knowing that, uh, when he gets down to turn eight or nine, I'm still going to have five, six cards in hand right. or more, right? Or maybe access to more through uh, Outpost Siege or Stolen Strategy, something like that. Um, or even what's the one? Uh, Experimental Frenzy. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. Another thing that is, are you losing to problematic artifacts and enchantments? All the time. <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> it, it's, it's a big deal. And that's why we've always preached on the, on the Brothers War that you got to have removal for those things. You know, I, I hear people talking about, you know, oh, you know, this enchantment just wrecked me or this artifact did this crazy stuff. And I'm like, why, why don't you have that removal, right? Like, that's something you, you definitely need to be putting in those decks. Yeah, I mean, in some cases, you're playing monocolor, you're going to have to, you know, dip into the really expensive, like, seven casting costs, like, colorless stuff, like Meteor Golem or something. Mm -hmm. But it's probably worth doing. And I'll tell you, um, even in a mono red deck, like, I try to have something that can answer these, right? Like, yeah. like a Chaos Warp or a Meteor Golem or... Just something, because you're going to need it. And I'll tell you, that game that we mentioned earlier in the episode, my enchantments just never got messed with. And I was just getting value after value after value, just turn over turn. And that snowballs into victory, right? So, like, yep. you know, maybe also analyze your games from that perspective. Like, maybe it's not like something that's oppressive that's stopping you, but maybe it's like this incremental advantage that's happening for your opponents, like a risk study type situation. Yeah. Like, and if that's happening... Maybe you want to bump up to like six, seven pieces of, uh, you know, like all purpose, you know, single target removal in your deck or something like that. Yeah. Um, so another thing is, you know, are you, are you often drawing your, you know, your first seven and being, seeing, you know, real high casting cost uh, cards, you know, like five and up, you know. It's, I don't have a play with this hand until turn four. Right. And that's my commander. Right, and you've got, like, the appropriate amount of lands, right, but everything else is just way too high. Like, you know, th that's going to happen sometimes, because you know, um... You want to play with the thing. big... Yeah, and you want to play with the big spells, because right. they're the haymakers, right? Like, they're sure. the big, powerful stuff. So, I'm not saying don't play those, uh, yeah. but maybe only play, like, two or three in your in your deck, or or make sure that you compensate with, like, lower casting cost drops, so that, yeah. you, you know, you have early game interaction, and, uh, 
I don't know. Let's see. Where are we here? Um, yeah, like may, maybe it's time to lower your mana curve. Maybe you're you're playing against uh, some some really like fast commander decks, right? Yeah. Like, and if you just put a roadblock out there, even like like uh, something like um, ghostly prison. Yeah, sure. Three, that two and a white. Yeah, for like, hey, cost two more to attack me. Um, what's the guy I'm thinking of? The blue black artifact bird. Elfal Strike. Yeah, that's the one. Death so, Touch. Yeah. And, and draw a card. And draw a card. Replaces yeah, itself. So good. Something like that. You just put it in there. And then, like, now people are really incented to attack elsewhere. And stuff like that, you know, can really help your deck make it to the late game where you cast those big, powerful spells. Yep. So, um, you know, another thing to consider is what what is your deck supposed to do, right? Like, is it supposed to just go wide and have a bunch of creatures? Or you, I, I know what mine's supposed to do with Dirtle. That that is hard. Yeah, that's a fact. Super hard. Land go, <laughs> land go, <laughs> propaganda go. Leave me alone. I'm not. I'm not plotting anything. Pay here. no attention to the man behind the curtain. All right. You know, I'm just drawing a card every time playing a land. Just minding my own business. <laughs> so I Dirtle to this place called Value Town. Value Town. Um, but you know, th- really, like. Every deck has a point, right? You know, the, with the Eilid deck that we were talking about earlier, you know, the point is to gain a bunch of life and, you know, start using Eilid as crazy removal, right? Um, you know, so it, then once you know what your deck's supposed to do, is it doing that when you play, right? Maybe it is, maybe it isn't. If it isn't, you know, maybe there, you need to look through the cards in your deck and find cards that don't. Um, actively you, contribute. Yeah, exactly. That they, they don't further your agenda, and maybe switch those for different cards that do. Right. I, I think that's something to do. So, um, next yeah. we're gonna talk about so, a little bit of slot theory, Ryan. That's that's your specialty. Yeah. All so right. Maybe. So, uh, so if you built <clears throat> the deck that you're upgrading with slot theory in mind, um, something they may do, especially if you're only doing like some small tweaks to the deck, is you might be uh trading out like five cards. And if your deck's performing decently well and you just want to, like, give it a little bit of extra juice, um, maybe try to keep the slot numbers intact, right? So yeah. if you're going to upgrade one, like, you've got Raska's Contempt, right, which is two black black for an instant that exiles a creature or a planeswalker and you gain two life and you're like, yeah, you know what? I really want that effect. There's a bunch of planeswalkers in my meta. Let me take out this, like, um, you know, Terror Doom Blade. or Doomblade, whatever, and put in Raska's Contempt. Yeah, it costs a little bit extra, but you're, you know, you're getting a little extra value from it too so try to try to do swaps like that right like swap removal for removal or you know swap late game creature for late game creature or if you've got a life gain element like in the eily deck swap a life gain spell for a life gain spell but that again that's that's you know uh caveated on the fact that your deck's already performing pretty well right if it's not performing well now it's time to maybe dig a little deeper and investigate what slots you have and what you picked right so you, you know, if you're if you're just getting beaten all the time and your deck's never doing the thing it's supposed to do, that's probably a good indicator that your slots are are a little off kilter. Yeah. So, um, something that that I do um, when I when I build these these decks, you know, if I if you swap slot for slot, you know, t- take down like remember what you what you uh, what you swapped, right? Like write it down or just just have it and or make a little note or yeah, whatever. Yeah, exactly. And then you know when you when you play that card or when you have that card in your hand, think to yourself. Hey, would I rather have this this new card, or do I wish I had the the old card? You know, which which one feels feels like it would be better in this moment? You know, and if you're thinking of the old card, well, maybe maybe the upgrade wasn't as much of an upgrade as you thought. Uh, again, this is where playing these decks comes uh, uh, comes in, right? You you have to play it to to know. So, well, and, <clears throat> and it's and it's not just stopping at making the swap. I think that's the important piece here. It's it's that. You made the swap, but you're continually evaluating it, right? Right, like just because you made the swap doesn't mean it needs to be permanent, and it doesn't mean that there's not a better one available. And if you're not constantly evaluating it, you're going to miss out on opportunities to squeeze a little bit of extra oomph into yeah. your deck. So I think that's kind of the point here, which is just like keep that that uh, internal analysis going. Yeah, right? and it's something that I, I mean, I, I definitely update my decks pretty regularly. And that's something I'm, I don't. I'm always <laughs> I'm thinking so bad about. At it. I mean, I, it's just something I do, I guess, because I really like the decks I have. You know, I'm not. I don't build a lot of decks. You know, how many decks do you have, Ryan? 
More than one uh, Stanley case full. Uh, yeah, I mean. So I, like 20? Well, okay. So here's the thing. Okay. I'm not sure that you can really count like the pre-cons because a lot of times we'll play those like for a few nights and then I just leave it sleeved yeah. in there and I don't really tinker with it. But sometimes I go back and tinker with it. And those are actually really fun to upgrade too. Yeah, I agree. Um, but yeah, like even if you're just talking about like like total number, it's into the 20s very easily. And if you're talking about like ones that I made on my own, it's still double digits plus, right? And so I think that is one of the problems I have. It's like like the idea of going back and revisiting a, a deck, it's like, it's kind of like old news. And I'm like, right. oh, you know, the new hotness, I want to go check it out. Like, ooh, shiny. Like, let me go see it. So um, that, you know, that was a little bit later. So we'll just well, have to hit that now, I guess. And then, Yeah, I mean, I wasn't going to that specifically right now. But I was just, you know, I have like six decks that I play, right? And I've always kept it kind of low. If if, if I don't want to play it or I don't play it, I just take it apart, right? So that's why I'm always, you know, I see cards that come out and I'm like, yeah. I have such a hard time taking decks apart. Um, it's, yeah, this, no. is, this is a little uh, a little <clears throat> truth bomb here. Uh, it's really hard because I put a lot of time into them usually when I'm making them. And I'm like, oh, I'll go back and play it. I don't. Yeah, that, that's like, what... I, I have a white green Enchantress deck with uh, Sagarda at the helm of it. And... I have not played that deck in well over a year. There's some really good cards in it that could definitely be benefiting other decks, but I'm just like, maybe I'll play it, and it's got cool cards in it. I, it's, it's a problem I have. I'm a deck hoarder. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so that's, that's just kind of some idea. You know, I'm always thinking about what, what could I do to make, make the deck better. So um, let's see, where are we now? Yeah, so you know that's that's kind of using that, but you know when a new when a new set comes out, you know I'm I'm definitely watching the 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 previews and you scrolling know, down that Reddit feed, yeah, looking for the little the little tag saying, "Hey, there's a new preview card." Yep, and I just I'm like, "Oh, what what deck would this go in?" Maybe yeah, that I ho have. Hopefully, the the audience out there did that and they saw ours. Yep, right because yeah, by the time this video comes out, you'll have seen it for sure. So, um, yeah, <clears throat> I, just, I I just you know keep those down and like jot them down like i have like a, a, a wish list in the app that i use but you, know, you can do it in your notepad in your phone or a piece of paper or whatever you use to take your notes yeah a little piece of paper that you fold up and stick in your wallet yeah <laughs> you could definitely do that um, i mean know, we all have phones probably so i mean a stone tablet <laughs> a chisel. yeah or uh, a, little, a little bird that you used <laughs> right was it abraham lincoln style like coal on a on a shovel there you go i, I don't know if that's true i learned that i read that that's how he uh learned math i don't know if it's true or not i I wasn't there. I can't say. <laughs> yeah. Can't. Yeah. Picture didn't happen. Oh, they didn't have pictures back then. But, but no, like yeah. it's, uh, it, it's a good thing to do. And honestly, like that's probably one of the, one of the easiest things you can yeah. do, which is like when the hype for the set comes out, like just jot a little note down. Like you're, you're going to see something. You're gonna be like, that looks yeah. like fun. Like when Electro Dominance was spoiled, yeah. I was like, yes, yeah, same. please more of that. And so like, and I, you know, I knew that I wanted it, but then like, once you got three or four copies, you're like, okay, where are they going? Who's right. who, where's the where's the electro dominance every, hidden? Every red deck, all um, of them, literally, so, literally all of them. There, there's some other places that you can get uh, you know inspiration from uh, from for upgrading your deck. You know, ED, EDH Rec is is a good one. They definitely, you know, you look up your commander, and then at the very top, it's like what new cards are there that have just come out from a set. What an awesome feature. Yeah, it really is. Seriously, <clears throat> EDH Rec, good job on that one. Like, when yeah. you go to a page, you're like, oh, these are the cards from, like, the most recent couple of sets. Yeah. And, you know, I could go there and look at my Kest deck, yep. right? Like, my Spellslinger uh, Grixis thing, and just go look and, and look up that specific commander and see, here are the new cards that people are putting in there. And that, like, it doesn't even necessarily have to be those cards, but I'm going to be like, oh, that effect looks really good. Yeah. I want something like that. And then maybe I'll switch over to using Scryfall and I'll try to like look for cards that do something similar to right. that. Right. Like Scryfall is another really excellent resource. Yeah. It uh, is. The search capabilities on it super are robust. Sweet. Yeah. Um, you can go crazy on it. You can even sort it, like fil filter it by money. You can even like, uh, like if you search for um, terms, you can actually uh, sort the results by EDH rec relevancy, yep. which is so cool. So, I mean, those are two super good resources right there. Like, if you're just looking for inspiration, um, go out to EDH Rec and then look for similar cards on Scryfly. It'll it'll really get you there. Yeah, it, it's super good. You know, another one is uh, YouTube videos. You know, we watch a lot of those. I mean, 
Jumbo Commander we, we, we spoke about earlier. Um, you know, the, he does videos all the time. Yeah. Like, like there was a, a Haunt of Hightower um, deck tech, which was really interesting. And his videos are really in depth. And every time I watch one, even if it's not a deck tech, like one was about like cards in the cart or whatever. And just consuming media by people that are creating good content yep. will make you think of other things that you want to add to your deck. For and sure. you, you might even just get a deck tech, right? Yeah. Like, I mean, you know, and even. You you built that one deck that that DJ made the um yeah brains, brains conjure deck. adept yeah yeah that that deck was was a lot of fun you know another one is uh wedge from the mana source yeah, yeah. mana has a lot of like top ten lists and things like that uh, I definitely watch those videos and enjoy them quite a bit and find I learn learn quite a bit from those and then oh wait I want to I want to jump in here and also yeah. like when a new set is releasing he always has like these daily videos where he's like yeah. talking about the stuff that got spoiled and he like does the turnaround on those so fast. Um, and they're they're excellent sources of inspiration. Yep. Um, and they're really well produced. So um, I always watch those. Uh, so thanks, Wedge, for that. And another YouTuber that makes really interesting content is you know I did mention earlier was uh, Dev from Strictly Better MTG. His videos are great. Um, he does t uh, tend to focus a lot on standard, but he does mention Commander a bunch. Yeah. And uh, those videos are just great uh, sources of inspiration for stuff that you might want to add to your decks. So um, good stuff there. Uh, so what else do we have here? We got a uh, podcast. You know, a lot of podcasts do uh, deck techs. You know, uh, we do them from time to time. Um, uh, Command uh, Commanders Brew does one every, every week. episode. Yeah, yeah. Man. I mean, I, they're building decks like crazy. But you know, and they're an awesome source for like finding some more budget type stuff. Yeah. You know, their their decks aren't like ultra budget like they used to be, which actually I'm, I'm a fan of. Like they really do kind of like actually allow, like it widens the the, the types of decks they can make. Yeah. But uh, their content is fantastic. It is. And uh, the deck techs, sometimes they're, 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 they're funny, but um, a lot of times there's just really good information there and they yeah. have like uh, sections on like which cards work together yep. and like stars of the deck and stuff. So um, if you're looking for some inspiration on, on how to fix up your decks, um, I, I get inspiration from them constantly. Yeah. So it's, thank it's you guys good, for that. For sure. Um, and then the last one is, you know, who, who are you close to? Your friends, right? Um, you know, I definitely, we, we talk about cards that... All the it, time. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, you know, so people in your play group, you know, may have ideas of cards that you can put in your deck that, you know, some sort of super obscure card that you never would have thought of, right? So they're like, oh, well, this card, you know, I was playing back in whatever, Cold Snap. Or and, maybe they listen to a podcast and they right? got an idea, and then they can share it with you, and you can get like a like a curated list of of goodies right? <laughs> to sample into your decks for sure. Because you know, if you're a Magic player, obviously you enjoy talking about Magic. I mean, we definitely do. I, I all know lot, we do yeah. for sure. Um, so yeah, that's that's one. So you know, another thing to do, we we kind of touched on this earlier is definitely consider your meta. You know, what what kinds of decks are being played? Are you seeing a lot of uh, counter Magic type decks? Are you seeing a lot of combos? Are you seeing uh, Infect decks? Uh, is, is Craig in your, yeah, in your meta? Yeah, Craig Blanchette, Mr. Right? Infect, right? For I sure. mean, if you're playing with him, definitely get those early drops in there. Yep. And, you know, leeches, right? <laughs> 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 but, but yeah, or like, you know, uh, maybe Shivam is in your play group and yeah. you've got a lot of token decks running yeah, around. Yeah, for sure. Right? There's, there's a ton of stuff um, that, that you can consider here. And, I mean, I think there's lots of, there's lots of cool things, right? Like, if there are a lot of counters running around in your meta, you can play um, that new card from um, Ravnica Allegiance that's, um, I forget the name of it, but it's a green and red enchantment that makes your creatures not be able to be countered, and they have Riot. Oh, is that, um, it's that card. It's it's a card. It's, it's right it's, here. It's going to be right there. Or over here, somewhere. I mean, it's going to be over there. I, I, you know, I don't, I don't really know. We'll see. We'll see. Right, and if combo heavy is <laughs> happening, maybe get a Teferi's Protection gone in there or yeah. some more counter magic for yourself. Yeah, Pact right. of Negation is, is great for killing combos. Mm -hmm. Does it super well. Um, or some cheap sweepers if you got a lot of tokens running around. Yeah. Like, or like Echoing Truth. There's a card that will pop up here probably, and you're going to be like, oh, wow, that's a card. Yep. And I, I never see it played, but it's super good against tokens, and it's in blue, right? So if you're a blue mage, like, like I am, you know, get it in your deck, right? I suppose. <laughs> so, uh, all right. So, yeah, definitely. I mean, like, yeah, consider your meta, right? right? Like, like, not just like how you make your deck better, but like how you make your deck better against its foes, right? Like, right. Like that's part of the equation too. It's not just your deck. It's it's where your deck's going to be played. Right. Like if you like listen to us and we're like, oh yeah, this is my deck and I do this, and then you build your deck to 
to counter our decks, right? That, that doesn't gonna help you. Chances are, you know, you're you're probably not playing with us. You're probably in like somewhere not near here, right? I mean, obviously there are some of you near here, and yeah, you definitely should be like listening and like <laughs> plotting. But you know, <clears throat> right? You know, pl- plan for the people that you actually play with. I, I think that's real important. Um, you know, something else. Th- there are some pitfalls though, right? When you get into this, one of them, you know, Ryan mentioned earlier is. You just straight up end up building a new deck. You're getting these cards, and you're like, oh, well, what if I do? Oh, it's new deck time. And that does happen. <clears throat> right? All and, the time. Oh, I'm so guilty of it. Um, you know, so you also want to make sure that, you know, you don't take out too many cards that uh, further the agenda of your deck, right? So if you're doing, like, tokens or discard or control, you don't want to take out, like, all your counter spells for control, right? Like, you're going to need those. Right, tokens, same thing. Like your token makers. Yeah, if you, if you have like twelve cards that produce tokens in your deck, and you take out five of them, that's a big hit. Yep, it's yep. like nearly half, and your deck's gonna function differently, right? So for sure, yeah. You know, I guess unless you have like a ton of tutors, but um, so okay, so so that's the potential pitfalls. Yep. So something that might we thought might be interesting, um, is we'll do a live demonstration here. Yep. Right, like Zach has a deck. Uh, it's Eily the Eternal Pilgrim. Yep, we talked about it earlier. And we're going to do a little upgrade sesh on it. Pretty short and sweet, not like a ton here, but, um, and this will kind of like simulate that asking a friend, right? right. Yeah, um, I definitely, you know, I got that exquisite blood and that's, you know, yep. And the, my Eilie deck is the one that I, I want to put it in. So, you know, I, I we start. Well, you obviously got to take something out, right? Yeah, for sure. Like, you know, and there's other few other things that I've I've kind of like noticed that I, I want, like, you know, maybe a little bit more removal, things like that, um, life gainer things, right? So uh Exquisite Blood is definitely one of the cards that I want to add. Um, just because it, it pairs so well with Sanguine Bond. And that should, should we read those out? Did we read them out before? I don't think we did, but Let's read out Exquisite Blood. Yeah, we definitely should. It's four and a black, and it's an enchantment. It says, whenever an opponent loses life, you gain that much life. So, pretty sweet. It's kind of like it gives all your creatures lifelink, but um, it's even better than that, because anything that makes them lose life um, gives you life, like if they tap an ancient tomb, right? All that stuff. So, And then um, Sanguine Bond is um, a a three and two black enchantment that says, whenever you gain life, target opponent loses that much life. And so, if you ever pair these two together, that's Infinite Town. Any damage yep. just kind of s- makes a little loop-de-loop thing happen yeah. here. And uh, that's, uh, yeah, luckily you're not playing a lot of tutors. So, it's probably yeah. not going to happen all the time. Yeah, exactly. Um, but, yeah, like, good stuff. And, you know, this card is sweet. Then, like, the yeah. art is, like, super chilling and terrifying. Like, those, those, ooh, those haunting eyes. Okay, so, should we talk about the stuff that we're thinking about taking out first? Yeah. Yeah, so some of the cards that we've, Thought about we've decided to take out. Um, let's see. We decided that uh Drena's emissary was not super good. It's uh one a white and a black for a two two uh vampire cleric ally as flying, and at the beginning of your upkeep, each one loses one life and you gain ten life. No, I it's one life. <laughs> wait, did I say ten? You did. I don't know why I said ten. Um, <laughs> it's because you thought that you gained one life for each life lost this way. And you thought it was going to be three, but it's only one. Well, no, I think what I was saying was, because we talked about, you know, and I was like, this is a good card. And Ryan's like, well, you know, how many how many games does he usually go? I mean, right, turns to get, do you get in a game? And I was like, I don't know, like 20, 30. And he's like, uh, more like 10, dude. I was like, oh. He's like, so, you know, you'd like gain 10 life and people would lose like 10 life. That's not super good. And that's, that's if you play it on turn three and the game goes that long right. and it doesn't die to like, you know, collateral damage to some wrath. <laughs> Right? right, like I think the I think the actual like average case for that card is probably like three. Yeah, I, th- I think you're right. Um, you know, another one, and I, I feel like this one was just too high on the curve for for what it did. It's Defiant Bloodlord. It's five and two black for a vampire flying. Uh, whenever you gain life, target opponent loses that much life. It's a four five. Um, there's Cliffhaven Vampire, same kind of deal. Two for a white and a black for a two four vampire warrior ally. As flying, when you gain life, each point loses a life. Um, <clears throat> we uh, we're trying to race. It's one white. It's an instant. Remove target enchantment from the game. And I want to go <clears throat> on the the record here. So the reason we're yeah. taking that out here, like that's a good card. Yeah, it is. And you know, if you've got Xenagos running around in your meta, 
you know, you, you maybe you want to leave it in. But in this particular deck, we have white and black, and we have yeah. access to like anguish on making and uh, utter end, and you've got dust to dust in there. Um, yeah. Or uh, what's the dust card? I mean, uh, return to dust. Oh, return to dust. Dust to dust is a different card. I think that's the artifacts. But um, the, the point being, you have a ton of yeah, removal. Yeah, there's already a, there's a there lot. Yeah, for this and um, those yeah, I've got uh, mortified. Right? Yeah, yeah, and like utter end and anguish on making and stuff like that. They're more uh, generic. They can get a yeah. creature. They can get a planeswalker. They can get anything. So, um, yeah, we're, not, we're definitely not dissing that card. It's just I've already got a bunch of removal, and that's a pretty specific one. So, you know, I think it's okay to take that out. Um, last, we got Mindstone. Um, it's okay, right? It's two, tap it for colorless mana. You can pay one, tap it, sack it, and draw a card. There, there's quite a bit of card draw in here. I, I don't think I'm, I'm not too worried about that. I've got like Fire Extinct Arena, Underworld Connections. Um, yeah, something to think about here is it is ramp, okay? Um, yeah. And and your deck probably could use a little more ramp. And, and I think um, like Smothering Tithe is in there, and that's going to help out a bunch. Yeah. But like you can play your commander on turn two For sure. often. And so pretty much every game. Like a two mana mana rock is not super great. It's not going to accelerate out your commander. Um, so. I don't know. Like, I think it's fine in there, but some of these other cards that we're talking about adding might be a little better. Right. So we've already talked about uh, Exquisite Blood. Next, we're going to talk about Ethereal Absolution. And this is a new card from Ravnica Allegiance, and it's pretty sweet. It is... Come on. It is four white-black for an enchantment, and it says creatures you control get plus one, plus one. Sweet. And you've yeah. got a lot of token makers in there, so yeah. it's like going wide. And then creatures your opponents control get minus one, minus one. Also awesome. Yep. Especially yep. against token strategies. Here's the best, though. Two white, black, exile target card from an opponent's graveyard. If it was a creature card, you create a 1-1 one, one white and black spirit creature token with flying. So, you know, basically you afterlife something from their graveyard. That's super good. And by the way, the thing you afterlife, it's, it's really a 2-2, two -two, right? Because Ethereal Absolution is buffing it. Yep. And so it's like incidental graveyard hate um, and... It's pumping your team and it's, it's dissing their team. There's a lot going on there. I think this card is is a really interesting inclusion here. And I think it'll be good, especially because you are doing the go-wide stuff. Right. right. And I think it's good, too, for the uh, for dealing with Grievous. If you know, Golgari, Grave Troll, get out. Um, see, the next one is uh, Approach of the Second Sun. I'll read it. We don't the have the Ryan Gambit pays off. <laughs> uh, he just pushed the phone at me. Um, <clears throat> yep. <laughs> so it's, uh, it's a sorcery for six and a white. It says, uh, if Approach of the Second Sun was cast from your hand and you've cast another spell named Approach of the Second Sun this game, you win the game. Otherwise, put Approach of the Second Sun into its owner's library, seventh from top, and gain seventh li seven life. That, that's pretty good. Um, you, know, you gain seven life and... You know, with Eile, one if you if you have more than ten like more than ten that you started with, so fifty. 50 mm -hmm. You know, you that's can, how math works. Yep, <clears throat> yep. You can pay one a white and a black to sacrifice another creature, exile target non land permanent, activate this ability only if you have at least ten more life than your starting life total. You know, seven life gain is gonna get you there. Well, yeah, and the thing is, like in this deck, you're not tutoring a bunch, so like no. if this just comes up. Now, you've got a lot of card draw in here, so yeah. it's not going to necessarily be seven turns in between, and because you're not shuffling your deck a bunch, yeah. you know, and the thing is, you know, you're giving your opponents time to plan yeah. against this, and if they see, like, oh, man, I have no way to deal with that, maybe they all just, like, focus and it becomes a game of Arch Enemy, and that's fine, right? And honestly, a seven-mana sorcery should be pretty impactful. So right. I think it might be fine in your deck. It goes towards a life game theme, mm -hmm. and it gives you a win con, which I think your deck needs yeah. some of. So I, I think it's a good include. Um, so next we have Hour of Revelation. Okay, so this card is three, white, white, white. It's a sorcery. And it says it costs three less to cast if there are ten or more non-land permanents on the battlefield. And then it says destroy all non-land permanents. So ten or more, and it's not that you control. Right. It's total. In a four-player game, that's 2.5 non-land permanents per player. That happens every game. Yeah. All of the games, right? So um, now I don't know if you have trouble with a bunch of like artifacts and enchantments. I know that your deck in particular is running a lot of artifacts and yeah. enchantments. So 
This one's going to be more specific in the way you play it. But the cool thing I like about this spell is that on the turn you play it, you're going to have a lot of leftover mana yeah. that you'll be able to like develop your board some. So right. um, you might be able to like have the next creature that's out there or lay some enchantment that's going to mess with folks. So mm-hmm. I don't know. I, I think it's an interesting include. This is one that's yeah. going to require some testing, but yeah, I, I, sure. I think it's interesting. Yeah. Um, so, you know, maybe that one will work out. Maybe it won't. We'll find out through through testing. So the next one is one that we, that I wanted to add and we kind of talked about and looks like it was uh, Kaya's Wrath. It's um, two white and two black for a sorcery and destroy all creatures. And then you gain life equals the number of your creatures that died. I I thought it was all creatures when I first read it. So I was like, yeah, that seems good. But then it's like, just my creatures. Hmm. That doesn't seem as good, right? <clears throat> it's still, you know, your your regular four mana for a for a board wipe, you know, a wrath of God or a damnation or day of judgment even. Um But if you're gaining a ton of life, you're you're probably losing a lot of your stuff in the process. Although yeah. with, with tokens it's it's slightly better. Yeah. Um but I mean honestly I think that in our format, a four mana or a five mana wrath, they're they're not a whole lot different. Right. And I think this other one that you're thinking about putting in there is just gonna perform like better. Yeah. Uh and the next one is uh Fumigate. I think it's three and yeah, it's three and two white destroys all creatures, and then you gain one life for each creature destroyed that way. So basically, it's yeah. what you thought, guys. Right? Yeah, basically, <laughs> basically. And it's it's easier to cast on your mana, right? Like yep. you don't have to have like there there may be games where like you need to cast it early, and like white white black black is hard. Right? Yeah, like your deck can probably do it, but if you've got like a soul ring, that's not going to help you cast. Yeah, it. Yeah, for sure. Right. So I think Fumigate is a better include in this deck. And I think it fits the idea and it's going to do a life gain. And if you can kind of like, like the cool thing about your deck, right, with Eilie at the helm is you drop Eilie, she's got death touch. There's a lot of times people just don't attack you because they're like, well, you'll just block and, and I'll lose my thing. And then you'll I'll cast her again because she's really cheap. She only costs two. And so what ends up happening is people just kind of go elsewhere. Yeah, and, and they, I've seen that. Yeah, and they build up their board too, right? So you know, coming in with a fumigate where you're the only thing you lose is your commander, that can happen. Yeah. So I don't know. I think a decent include. Right. And then, you know, if you gain enough life to to bring Eile online and you have like a token generator or something also, it, I think that's pretty good. All right. So that's kind of like what yeah. we were gonna do for Zach's Eile, the Eternal Pilgrim deck here, right? Like just a little just a little swap here. Just like yeah. five out, five in. Yeah, not not a big change. You're not changing the the strategy or anything like that. And we haven't tested it yet. Yeah. Right. But we will for and, sure. and we'll let y'all know how it yep. goes. And so um I guess what I'd like to say is if you out there um tweak your decks a lot, tell us how you do it. Yeah. For right. Sure. Give us that YouTube comment where you explain it, hit us up on Twitter, let us know how you upgrade your decks. Were we on the money? Did did we miss something big? We might right. have. Yeah. Right. So please let us know. Um, and then um, you know, thank you so much for listening. And your support means the absolute world to us. Um, yep. you know, remember to follow us on Twitter, subscribe on YouTube, um, hit the bell thing. Right. So you get notifications when we do new stuff. Yep. And uh, you know, re- tell a friend. If yep. if you like it, then tell a friend. So we would really appreciate it. And Zach, if they wanted to do any of those things. How would they do it? Well, um, you can always check us out on the on our our webpage to to get the audio episodes. You know, brotherswarcast.com uh, on YouTube. You can check us out youtube.com slash c slash brotherswarpodcast. Brotherswar podcast. <laughs> um, you know, if you want to talk to us on the Facebook group where we're always discussing decks and cards that are neat and things like that. Um, Maybe you'd find some inspiration <clears throat> for upgrading your decks there. Yep. Um, you know, check us out facebook.com slash group slash Brothers Warcast. You can email us directly, mail at brotherswarcast.com. On Twitter, we are at Brothers Warcast. And individually on Twitter, I'm at Green Geek. And I'm at Z4CK38. All right. So thank you so much for making yep. it all the way here. Uh, we love being a part of this community. Yep. Um, we hope that you are having an excellent day. For sure. And until next week, this is the Brothers War saying, Geek, geek out. out. 